Hey guys, I'm Hillary Bushway and I'm joined here with coach, head coach Cooper Ferris. So first of all, congrats on a great win last night. Thanks, we need it the worst <laughs> way. So a little bit of a rocky start to the season. Can you talk yeah. to us about the past week? Well, you know, we've, we've been outmanned a little bit, but we're getting some guys in now and, and uh, I like the guys we have. They, they work hard. We just, uh, you know, we just, uh, you know, trying to get, trying to get to know each other and I'm trying to get to know them and and uh, you know we're trying to get people in the right place and you know it's, it's always tough the first of the season starting that out but uh, hopefully we're figuring things out a little bit. Good. So throughout the past couple games um, what were some of the challenges you faced during well, those losses? You, you know the, the big thing we, we had uh, I think four or five one run losses we didn't get the big hits with runners in scoring position I think we in two games, we stranded ten runners out there, and, and uh, you know we just didn't have the right people up at the right time, and, and uh, just didn't get didn't get it done. And, and then three of the games we didn't pitch very well early in the game. We gave up a three run three spot in the first inning in one game, and then a four spot the next game, and then a, a one you know a home run solo home run the first, and you know with runs at you know, you can't, you don't score a lot of runs up here. So if you get buried that quick, you know, it's hard to hard to come back from. But our guys fought back and got got a chance to gotten a chance to win all three of those games. Mm -hmm. And and uh, you know, we we just didn't get the big hits. And uh, you know, in this league, you'll find if you'll you know if you pay attention to it, they'll you know the guy the teams that get the two out two strike hits with runners in scoring position generally are the teams that win and the teams mm -hmm. that pitch well in those spots usually are the team that wins. So uh you know we didn't do either one of those and uh you know last night we did. We got a got a big two out hit and uh got a run in and then got a got you know, did some things well offensively that we've been working on all week and for the last three weeks and right. uh you know we got some things done last night so it turned out good for us. Good. So when do you fit in you know, you play every day. So when do you fit in practicing and you know cr critiquing those skills that you were talking about? Well, these guys have a have a pretty tough schedule. They, uh, you know, we play every night, so there's not a lot of practice time. We lost two of our off days that we generally would have worked mm -hmm. on some things that we didn't really have time to do. And uh, you know, we we uh, do early outs with the hitters. We break them up. There's there were nine hitters at the time. Now we've got 11, I think, which is good. And we'll have more after today and tomorrow. But uh, you know, we we uh, generally break them down into three groups, and there's three guys per group, and and we we work on those things that you talk, you mm -hmm. know, we just talked about, and uh, you know, we we uh, just basically trying to get used to swinging the wooden bat instead of the aluminum bat. Right. So looking forward to this next week, are you setting short-term goals for the for the team to accomplish, or what well, are you focusing mostly on? Generally, what we do, and this this may sound kind of crazy, but it's you know it's kind of been my deal ever since ever since I've been here, um, the uh, we try to break the season down into four segments. There's ten, you know, there's 44 games, and we we try to do you know 10 game segments. And we, right. you know, you want to finish above 500 in those 10 games. You try to go six and four. If you do that, you're generally in the playoffs and probably win the division. Right. But uh, we didn't do a very good job of that this first 10 games, and uh, you know we're going to try to try to see if we can't. You know, you don't. If you try to think about swallowing the whole elephant, you know, you just you can't get it done, you know. So we're just trying to bite off pieces of it and see if we can get <laughs> get, get in the playoffs. Absolutely. So I have to ask the College World Series, who are you who are you pushing for, Mississippi State uh, or UCLA? Well, I, you know, those guys have made it this far, they might as well go ahead and win it. You know, <laughs> we're probably not gonna get them here, here any early, but Mississippi State, you know, we've got two guys there, Pertle, the second baseman, and uh, he can he can hit, and you right. know, and then we got Jonathan Holder, who was here with us last summer as a, one of our closers. So, mm -hmm. you know, we just, uh, you know, I hope those guys win it, and uh, you know, I'm a Mississippi guy, so you know, everybody in the state's kinda pulling for them. Yeah, kind of got to pull for your home yeah, state. Yeah, Coach Polk, Coach Thompson, you know, those guys, and I know Coach Maxwell's <laughs> real close to Kendall Graveman. You know, he was here with us last year, so we hope Kendall, uh, Kendall does well too. He's a great kid, and he's one of big. He and Jonathan were big catalysts in our run last year, so. Right. So the team seems to be all coming together and. Just waiting for a couple more guys. Yeah, we're we're waiting for actually uh, eight more guys. So <laughs> so we still got a slew of them out there. You know, I've never had this many ever, so it's been kind of a challenge to, you know, to mix and match right. things for us. But uh, 
you know, we're, we're working at it mm -hmm. and uh, we'll continue to do that. Right, well, when you think about it, it's better to have a challenging June than it is to oh, have yeah. a tough July yeah, and August. Yeah, you don't, you don't want to have playoffs. a tough July and August. That's right. usually when you get buried. So uh, I just hope we hadn't gotten ourselves too far in a hole right now to fight back. But I don't think we have. I think, you know, we're not, we're fourth of the way through and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, we've got three quarters of it left. So hopefully right. we'll get on a roll and start doing some things that get some folks out to the ballpark. Hi, I'm Adam Toth, and you're watching Wareham Gateman Around the Horn. Hi, everybody. I'm Austin Pollock. Here's some of our calls of the week. Here's an RBI ground out that gave the Gateman a 3-0 lead against the Hyannis Harbor Hawks. Pitch. That one's chopped off the glove of the pitcher Foley to shortstop Stankwis on to first. They get Walsh, but Tino Lipson comes in from third and scores the third. So now it's Matt Walsh. He squares the bunt, lays it down. It's back to the pitcher. Andrews will go to first. The runners move up, and he sails the throw. In to score is Toth, moving up to third is Podrats, and Walsh scoots up to second, and just like we saw last night, a throw from a pitcher on a comebacker gets sailed right there on the throw to first, and right now, the Gatemen are one run away from tying things, still nobody out. This was the second extra base hit of the season, an RBI double for Alabama's Mikey White. <laughs> and that one's into right field opposite field. Toad heads for third. And opposite that one gets past the right fielder Hoskins. Rounding third headed for home is Toad. He will score. And into second is Mikey White. Here's the lone run of the game against Harwich. The Gateman fell to the Mariners 5 to 1. Runs and moved runners along the base paths. That one slapped into center field. A base hit for Tino Lipson. Rounding third headed for home is Stewart. He will score, and Wareham is on the board. It's 4-1 to one as Tino Lipson scoots into second with a one-out double. This is the first run the Gateman scored in its 3-1 victory over the Brewster Whitecaps. With two outs here. And here is Brock Stewart. He's been one of the more patient hitters for him. That one gets away from where we're coming in from third is Podrats. He will score, moving up to second, and now with a wide turn is Stancil. He will go back to second, but... In is a run. Podrat scores the first run of the night for the Gateman. It's 1-0 Wareham here in the bottom of the second. How about some sweet defense from Adam Toth? Here's the 1-0 pitch from Chitura. It's laced into center field. Toth, though, on the move. He makes the sliding catch in center field. Here's the second run of the game against the Brewster Whitecaps. Pull Stancil sacrificed him over. Here's the pitch. That's into center field. High fly out there. Now Heinemann's going back. They're going to try to tag up from third. Walsh does. The throw will go into the cutoff man, and Walsh will score standing up. 2-0 Wareham. To the Gateman. Just take that 2-0 lead. Dalton Brown from Texas Tech earned the save to give the Gateman their second win of the season. Both a couple steps toward left field. The pitch. Grounder to Mikey White at shortstop. On to first. Second win of the season for the Gateman. The save for Dalton Brown. It's a 3-1 victory for the Gateman. I'm Austin Pollock. Be sure to join my partner, Mike Monaco, next week for more Gateman highlights. Hey, guys. I'm here with shortstop Mikey White. Um, how about you tell us a little bit about how your year went at Alabama? Uh, it didn't really start out too well, but uh, picked it up towards the end of the year, and uh, we made it to a regional and went pretty far in that. Good. So what kind of things do you notice that are different, you know, playing here on the Cape compared to the SEC? Well, the fields are actually a lot different, and... Uh, crowds and you see good pitchers every day every day you come out here you're going to face a guy that's a top quality arm on his team right so aside from baseball what are you studying at alabama i'm actually majoring in exercise science which i don't really know what that is but uh <laughs> it's kind of just like a general i don't really know i don't really know what i want to do after play baseball so. all right that's fine so um if things weren't to go the way you wanted with baseball what, what can you see yourself doing in the future uh, maybe coaching or scouting or something like that. I'd probably want to stay around baseball. So, yeah. Hey guys, I'm here with infielder Danny Rosenbaum. Uh, Danny, you just got done with the College World Series. Can you tell us how that was? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Or great, uh, great competition down there, and it was just you know, it was unfortunate we got knocked out so early, but it was a great time. What do you think one of the biggest challenges um, going to be playing here on the Cape League? Uh, I hear pitching is really good, so I know being a position player, I have to try and hold my own against all the, all the good pitchers around the country. Hey guys, I'm joined here with our Wareham Gateman broadcasters. I'm here with Mike Monaco and Austin Palak. Welcome. Thank you very much. So why don't you guys tell us a little bit about where you go to school, what your major is, and stuff like that. 
I'm a rising junior at Syracuse University. I study broadcast and digital journalism in the Newhouse School. I do the same uh, at the University of Notre Dame, so we, we got the Big East connection here with yeah. the three of us, yeah. <laughs> and I'll be a junior too. And uh, rest in peace, Big East. Um, <laughs> So what got, you in, what got you into broadcasting, you know, what made you decide to go that route? Um, I mean, when I was eight years old, I used to just sit on the couch in the summer and watch Red Sox games. <laughs> I'd have Don and Jerry on, I'd shut them off, and I would just really do a play-by-play -play broadcast and nobody but myself. <laughs> so I'd always you, wanted to play sports, but I obviously wasn't going to be a professional, <laughs> so I figured this is the next best thing. Yeah, so if you were to... Uh, uh, <laughs> it's gonna be edited, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Final cut. <laughs> so, what would your dream job be once you guys graduate college? I think for me, uh, I wouldn't want to be just resigned to one sport. I right. would love to work for like ESPN or any of the other networks, and uh, just you know get to call all the biggest sporting events. That would be probably the the dream job. Mm -hmm. I'm probably limited to just baseball because. <laughs> Right now, I guess the kind of hockey's on my mind, and with all those long last names, there's not a chance I'd ever be able to <laughs> get those long last names down. But um, baseball's just kind of been in my, just it's just always been a big part of my life, and I wouldn't really want to trade in for anything else. Right. So, so listening to you guys talk and broadcast throughout the games, you know, it's not like baseball is action packed, so you need to fill a lot right. of gaps compared to hockey, where there's like play after play after play. So like beforehand, what's your prep to like go in and what are you going to talk about in between plays? Um, well, I know sometimes when a batter's coming up or if there's a pinch hitter or if there's a new pitch or anything like that, um, I like to just look at the player's bio um, for their college team and just kind of pull any interesting facts about whether they were drafted, if they play any other sports, um, any awards they've won. I know if there's a runner on first base and let's say you stole 26 bases in 28 attempts last season at college that's something I say right there right. Um, something I also do is I look at the stats from the night before for both teams and then look at their overall season stats and kind of just throw that out there mm -hmm. I'd say yeah that is probably the big thing with all the numbers and everything right. and then I've realized so far that you can learn a lot just from hanging out um, at the early BP and then before the game when they're taking BP both teams and you can just learn a lot about how they're trying to improve their swing or what changes they're making, and yeah. then talking talking to the coaches also helps. Yeah, yeah really, just I really to be able to have the works. talking points to yeah. to you know, say you know this is what he's trying to change or maybe you should keep an eye out for this yeah. those things and I'm, then whatever else we want to talk to go back and forth. Yeah, on. something we did actually before I think it was Tuesday before the season started that game against Chatham, um, we actually met with every player um, on the team who is here. We're still obviously have to do a couple more right. when players file in. Um, why they're here, what they're working on, and I kind of just a little, just little mini interviews to know more about them and stuff that we can use to fill that uh, kind of dead air. Right, and I'm sure the chemistry in between you two is important. Like yeah. you guys seem to get along and like yeah. you kind of pick up each other's slacks, which is good. Um, so Mike, you said that you'd want to do other sports. So mm -hmm. what happens if you get assigned a sport that you're not so comfortable with? You know, like um, how are you I mean, supposed to? I feel like that will probably happen because you're not just going to walk into your dream job. Right. So I guess I have to be prepared for that. Yeah. Um, but it's just like anything else. It, it, it's a good opportunity and it happens for a reason. So I think it'd be fun uh, to learn a new sport or even if it's a sport I already know something that maybe wouldn't be my first choice. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, as I've learned so far this summer, you're going to meet great people along the way and have fun if you truly enjoy doing it. Right. So something that the viewers at home can't see is when you guys are actually watching the game, you have papers, you have computers open, you have rosters. So what's in front of you guys? And I, and I always see you highlighting things, yeah. like, like main points that you're going to say. or. Um, I really think that, I guess, day by day, every, like on a game basis, I'm always changing <clears throat> my... My habits, I always take a, just like a, like a, whatever you call those, those folders that kind yeah. of fold out. And <laughs> what a concept. <laughs> Cut that. A, a, man, a manila envelope <laughs> folder? Yeah, I mean. is it manila? Yeah. Okay, manila folder. Or vanilla. <laughs> or green. Yeah. I think manila No, I color. don't use the green one. Yeah. Anyway. Right. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank God this is recorded. <laughs> um, I take a folder and I have rosters for each team. I come up with the rosters by myself. I kind of organize it the way I do. I usually have three columns, the number, the name, and then just a bunch of bullet points about them that I'd want to use. And okay. for the box that has their name, it also has where they go to school, their year, their positions, 
height, weight, bat right, bat left, throw right, throw left, and um, have that for both teams. And that's in a folder, so it's easy. There's not papers kind of everywhere. It's just right in front of me. And um, I also have an iPad out just so I can always, if there's something that I want to know, um, looking at out-of-town scores, things like that. And um, I also have a scorebook out. Always got to know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I like using even fewer papers and having that in front of me. So I do everything on my computer because I'm, we also I'm not use, as eco-friendly. Yeah. <laughs> we also use um, my computer to actually like produce, like broadcast it out. Right. Um, and it made sense for us to use my computer for that rather than have the team's computer mm -hmm. plus my computer, which right. is what I wanted to use. Mm -hmm. Um, so I have everything that Austin was talking about just on my computer, um, and then obviously I can look up stats and whatever else I need. And then I have a scorebook in front of me and a pen and a highlighter, and yeah, good to go. Yeah, to Some, yeah there's a few things, like I mentioned, that I do, I guess, that I kind of pick up along the way just from either talking to other broadcasters, just, any, just anything. And it's, um, I think for me with the highlighter, the big thing is, um, always have a red pen too for changes. So, <laughs> the highlighter is um, in our scorebook. We have a spot where we can actually write out like who's the name of the p of the player at each position, and okay. I highlight their last name because if I guess if it's Adam Toth in center field, I can just say Toth is under it makes the catch. I don't always have to say Adam Toth. Right. First name's not always necessary, right. but the last name is. Um, so, do you guys have a role model or a particular broadcaster that you kind of you know get style off of or look up to? I, I have to say Don Orsillo with Nesson. I've, I've watched probably thousands of his games, and I just uh, he, oh, it always, he always just stands out to me. I guess when you watch someone for so long, you just think he's the best at his job. Mm -hmm. Everyone in Boston seems to love him, the duo of he and Jerry Remy, and, and it's great. So I always want to kind of go after what he does, and I think I'm always trying to model after them even just in our own broadcast make Mike Jerry and make me Don or <laughs> make 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 Mike Don and make me Jerry right I don't have make one in Mike. particular um, probably because it was never something I was looking out for mm -hmm. uh, from a young age but now it's like now that I at least now I'm in this career path I think I'm so much more in tune to it when I watch a, a sporting event even if it's the Red Sox or if it's you know the NBA finals mm -hmm. which we're just on yeah. I'm trying to see how they do things and how they go about it and kind of take bits and pieces from diff all the different broadcasters. Absolutely. Well, Austin, Mike, thank you so much for coming in and talking to us tonight, and um, we'll be listening to you guys in the next game. Thank you. All right, thanks. <laughs> Hi, guys. I'm here with center fielder Adam Toth. Uh, tell us a little bit about how your year went at Baylor. Uh, it was good. Uh, we didn't play as well as we would have liked, but, I mean, it was still fun, and we all had a good time, so it was still a good year. Good. So as far as outside athletics goes, uh, what's your major? I'm a real estate major. So. Other than baseball, what are you looking to do with your real estate major? Uh, not really sure. <laughs> um, I just hopefully just get a job if it doesn't work out and just, I guess, live a normal life. <laughs> <laughs> all right, great. Well, thank you so much for talking to us this evening, and have a great game. Hey guys, I'm here with right-handed pitcher Andre Tatora. Can you tell us a little bit about how your season went at Southeastern Louisiana? It was good. Um, I went through a lot of ups and downs towards the beginning and middle of the season, but uh, I got back at it at the end and uh, just got a lot of stuff I need to work on and carry over to next season. Great. So what do you think is one of the biggest challenges you have to overcome playing here on the Cape? Um, just coming from a smaller school, not to, not to get down on myself, like thinking about guys being bigger and better I mean we're all we're all equal uh, in my eyes and uh, the competition the competition is really good out here but you got to be confident and know that you can succeed absolutely so can you tell us what your major is I'm majoring in kinesiology exercise science and if things wouldn't work out with baseball what do you think your dream job would be um, I guess to be a physical therapist with uh, just help athletes get healthy I am Mikey White, and you're watching Gateman Around the Horn. Hi, I'm Derek Drinkwater, and uh, we're going to do a little cooking segment here. And joining me today is Dan Dias, who is the PA announcer at the home games at Spoiling Field for the Wayham Gateman. Um, Dan, how long have you been doing it now? Uh, this is my fifth summer with the Gateman, and I'm very happy to be here with my friend Derek. And, uh, you know, we'll see what we, see what we got yeah, going we'll for us. We'll try not to burn the place down. Yep. Um, today what we're going to do is just something real simple. Um, college kids, they enjoy the simple things when they're at school, things that aren't very difficult to cook. So what we're going to do is we're going to do grilled cheese with tomato and uh, ham, you know, pretty simple. 
I mean, even Dan can get it right. Now, uh, I'm going to give you a disclaimer, Derek. My cooking history uh, is sandwiches and cereal. Uh, yeah. Those are my specialties. So, uh, you know, even I'm interested to learn today. All right. Let's uh, get ourselves a good size frying pan here because we're going to be cooking on big chunks of sourdough bread. I'll give you a tomato if you want to start slicing up Absolutely. the tomato. Got some nice big gigantic tomatoes there. Yep, organic, 89 cents at Shaw's. No, stop and shop. Stop. <laughs> um, you can slice it as uh, however you want. You can do thick, you can do thin. It, it's all okay. the kinds of things. There we go. So you've been doing this for a while now. And uh, what gets you into it? Um, you know, I, I, I've always loved baseball, and uh, being around the gate room was a great opportunity. I started as an intern when I was in college back in uh, 2006, um, and since then I've taken on a number of different roles. I did the webcast one year, um, security one year, um, and finally I, I transitioned into the PA, um, and I've just really enjoyed being there for all the home games and seeing some great baseball. And, and you had some pretty big shoes to fill too oh, when you first stepped in. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, you know, it's just a privilege and an honor to, to sit in that seat every day. And um, and you know, that's what I can say about yeah. that. It's and not only did you have big shoes to fill, but you also had the privilege of working with Carl Bean uh, a few times. A absolutely, he's just such a character, and, and he's someone who's missed uh, this year. And um, you know, just he was just a, a legendary voice, um, and, and we were fortunate enough to have him on several occasions um, two summers ago um, for yeah. his untimely passing this winter. Um, and, and Fenway will never be the same. So let's get a couple of slices of bread going here. Are we these too thick, any... you think? What's that? Are these too thick, you think? No, that's fine. All right, that's fine. Um, just drop those off there. For sure. Now. We'll get uh, some cheese. You want to get some of that Absolutely. out? Absolutely. I mean, and you can layer it however you want. You can put the cheddar on one side. Okay. Or you can mix it up, put a slice of cheddar on one side, a slice of American on the other. Right. You know, it can be generous with it. Absolutely. Because, you know, that's the, what grilled cheese is all about is the cheese. So we'll get some of these broken up and you can see all the mouths watering over there behind the cameras. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Paul Warren's fading away. He hasn't eaten in days. He's been waiting for this since Sunday. Yep. So we we'll get some ham. There you go. So not only do you do the PA announcing for the games, but you're also a host family as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've been a host family for several years. I uh, had the opportunity to get to know some of the, the kids quite well, many of whom I still stay in contact with and, and have become you know, some of my best friends. So it's, uh, it's, been, a, it's been a great experience uh, working with the Gateman and getting to know some of the ball players. Now, who do you have staying with you this summer? Uh, this year we have Mikey White, the shortstop from the University of Alabama. Okay. Um, you know, great ball player. He's been a welcome addition in Wareham so far. I think, uh, you know, he's got a smoother glove as we've seen around here, smooth in the field, and uh, he's shown that he can hit the ball too. So yeah. I think he's got a bright, bright future. Now, what's one of your best memories about being involved with the Gateman? In as many years as you've been there? Um, I think when we hosted the All-Star Game, uh, that was the summer Luke Merton was staying with oh, us. Yeah. And uh, the show he put on at the Home Run Derby was something I'll always remember. And uh, never again at Spillane Field have I seen balls just sail over the over the football press box. Yeah, one actually hit the top of the press box. Yeah, uh, yeah Luke uh, is one of my best friends. And... Uh, you know, we stayed in touch, and I went down to his wedding in Georgia, and I speak to him regularly, and, uh, Actual. you know, that was just, that was quite a show that day. So. Yeah, I mean, it, he hit the top of the press box, put a couple in the parking lot, the town hall parking lot, and if you've ever been to Splane Field, 
you know that the parking lot is located behind the town hall and the multi-service center. I mean, it's a good sized parking lot, and it's a good distance away. Oh, oh, that's away. a good, that's a good, four hundred plus foot shot out there. Yeah. So, so you want to get them like you know the cheese is starting to melt already on the bottom. So what I'll do is I'll flip these over so we can brown it. I don't, yeah, that's a little more than brown, but. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay oh. our, our broadcast one of our broadcasters Austin has just left the building because <laughs> now what laughing. you have right here is well done yeah good cheese yeah um, if you're like myself you don't want anything that's not good and toasty so yeah. you know you won't be disappointed with this grilled cheese yeah you had a it's actually not as bad as they would lead you to believe. And as you can see right here, it is just a well done throughout. It's evenly uh, toasty on all both sides of the bread. Um, and it'll give you a nice crunch when you bite into it. That's, so. that's the importance of a grilled cheese sandwich. Absolutely. Well, I thank you, Dan, for being here with us today. And thank uh, you. I had a blast. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to just biting into one of these in a few minutes. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're in Wayham, you want to come down and check out a game, Great baseball, great environment, a lot of good people there. And uh, check out any future episodes of Gateman Around the Horn. Stay tuned. I think we're in for a good season.